Hello folks, today we are going to read the prose number 3 that is two stories about flying. It's a very nice prose, it's a very interesting prose which tells you that in order to conquer your fears, in order to kind of overcome, in order to kind of give up all your negativity in order to rise above you have to kind of dismantle some beliefs you have to conquer your fears then you have to work hard for it you have to have that strong willpower and determination this chapter this prose is divided into two stories two parts the first part is his first flight and the second part is the black aeroplane so in this segment we are going to cover his first flight. That is the first part. This is the name of the first part and his first flight. His out here stands for the seagull. Okay, let me just come back to his first flight. This narrative, this sail is going to revolve around a seagull who don't know how to fly. So the story is about a baby seagull who wants to learn, who wants to fly, who wants to explore the sky, but he is unable to do that because he is not able to kind of muster enough courage to fly. So what to do? How is he able to fly? This chapter, this narrative, part one is kind of going to trace and demonstrate you how Finally, he is able to kind of overcome his fears and learn to fly. Okay, and this says his stands for seagull. First, as in because he is a baby seagull, so it is his first flight. He no longer knows how to fly. You will see that this seagull is always sitting on a plateau on the cliff. And he is kind of restrained, constrained to one place because, you know, He's so afraid to kind of venture into the sky. He thinks that if in, if in case he tries to kind of break free, set himself free of that plateau, that land, he's going to fall in the sky. So one fine day what happens, the seagull is having two brothers and one sister, both approximately of his own age itself. And uh, to finally they decide that, okay, the father and mother are taking charge of making them fly. There are two brothers and sister and all of them learned flying. All of them are very happy in exploring the sky. They are venturing into the sky. They are enjoying everything. They are enjoying the pleasant weather. The parents are teaching the baby seagulls how to catch fish from the sea. And they are very kind of enjoying and it's a very amu amusing task for them for them and because it's their first flight and they're not used to kind of flying and exploring the sky they're enjoying this task whereas our seagull our central character is restrained to the cliff is restrained to the same land and he is not able to eat anything he is not able to go anywhere and nobody the brothers, the sister and the parents, nobody is paying attention to the seagull because everyone is bothered about them. And he's getting very upset. He pretends though he's very hungry. Now it's evening since morning. They're learning to fly. They have learned how to catch the free and how to catch the fish. And now that it's evening, he's literally hungry. Nobody came and visited seagull. Nobody came and provided him uh, the food. And he's so hungry and he pretends that okay doesn't matter he pretends to sleep and then when he sleeps he thinks that okay someone will come and give me food but then nobody wants to nobody wants to spoon feed seagull but when the mother is eating the mother of seagull is eating the fish he uh, she kind of wants to go there and this seagull cries really a calls for mother because he's really hungry now he's he has no other option but to seek for help but to ask for help and then he calls his mother his family and finally the mother comes and the parents these parents are not sitting at a place which is approachable for seagull because they are sitting on some other cliff of another plateau so from there uh, he can see them 
and the mother comes from that cliff to this cliff by flying and when the mother is coming out here he is very happy he is literally starving he wants to eat and now he thinks the mother will come and give him the food and he'll be very sorted he'll be able to quench his hunger but what happens when the mother is coming near 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 to seagull and when mother sees okay he's crying shrilly he wants to eat he is literally hungry and as soon as a uh, seagull comes forward to eat the mother withdrew the mother withdrew and finally the seagull falls and when the seagull falls he thinks he's going to die he thinks that okay he's going to fall in the sea his heart starts pounding he's very terrified he's horrified he don't know what to do and he's screaming he's calling for help and at that point of time he tried to flap his wings he tried to open his wings this thing he has done in the past as well but when he did this in the past he and eventually when he saw the sea he was not able to kind of cross that boundary but today because he was hungry he was blinded by that he was blinded by hunger he was blinded by starvation and when kind of uh, he flapped his wings when he was going down 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 he was having no other option to kind of save himself and finally he learned to fly and finally he learned to fly because he was hungry the main motivation out here the encouragement was given by the mother so the family has a very key role to kind of uh, portray demonstrate out here they kind of uh, encouraged motivated criticized even screamed but he was really adamant he tried to but he was unable to he was not able to conquer his fear his fear when he sees the sea and the sea was so deep he thinks he's going to die but today um when he was blinded by hunger he learned how to fly when he was going down he realized that he has no other option but to fly so eventually he has to fly and now the whole family kind of revolves around him when he is flying and everyone is really happy and finally he gets his share of fish and then uh, we get to realize he's successful in his first flight and so can you everyone can overcome fears um it's there's a very uh, famous phrase which says it's a famous quote by roosevelt he says all we have to fear is fear itself so uh, the flying was not something which was troublesome the flying was not something which kind of terrifies him which kind of destructs destroys the seagull out here is his fears so you have to shed your fear in order to you have to come out of your comfort zone the comfort zone for the seagull was the land in order to, as soon as he like kind of break free of the barriers as soon as he shed all his fears he was able to fly so this is a very important chapter because his first flight and the name of the book is also first flight so please make sure that you are reading this chapter very carefully and this kind of explanation is not going to suffice for it you have to read the chapter mark important lines ask your doubts you can drop your doubts in the comment section below or you can contact me on whatsapp please uh, try to understand it's a very important chapter and now we are going to head towards the second part of the story uh let's just go ahead okay so we done with the first plot the first part is a story of seagull and the second part is a story of the black aeroplane okay so there is a pilot who right now is in france and wants to go to england england is a place where his family is residing and he wants to have a good english breakfast because he's hungry for that he's starving and you know this is two stories about flying one is a story of flying of a seagull the first flight and second is a story of flying the aeroplane okay so uh, there is a pilot and he has this old dakota uh, plane in which he is going to fly and the weather is very ple pleasant the night is very starry and the moon is full and bright and oh, when he takes off uh, he asks for location he tries to kind of contact the 
Paris control center and he's able to and he gets his direction and slowly and gradually he realizes when he switched to the last uh, uh, last share of the fuel he realizes that okay this is the only share of fuel he is left with and um, he's doubtful he's uncertain whether he'll be able to kind of reach his destination yes or no or how is he going to manage and when he's going um, he sees a black cloud a really black and horrifying cloud and he don't know what to do he's confused he's terrified he asks for location in order to kind of overcome in order to kind of not hit that cloud uh, the ideal way was to go from north or from east or from west but not from inside but he uh, as he wants to go back to his family in england in the shortest span of time and we also got to know that he is running short on fuel so he's having no other option but to go from the black cloud when he entered the black cloud he kind of realizes he asked for direction the radio stopped working all the signals all the locations he was not able to kind of uh, figure that out he was not able to kind of locate that everything stopped working now he's in doubt he has to trust his instincts at this point of time and he's so uh, scared he don't know what to do how to reach paris how to reach england from paris and all this happened when he was 150 kilometers away from paris the france actually and uh, finally what happens is uh, he see a black aeroplane in that black cloud and that pilot of that black aeroplane kind of signals this pilot old dakota plane pilot that okay follow me i'll give you direction and remember i told you that there's no location no directions no radio nothing no sort of instructions is coming to him in form of anything right now and at this point of time the only choice he has was to follow that black aeroplane and he was kind of okay he trusted his instincts he trusted his guts and he followed that black aeroplane and after a point of time he 30 30 minutes after a point of time he realized that okay uh, now he's having fuel just to fly for five to ten minutes and then uh, otherwise the plane will crash he has no other option because he's running short on fuel and when he comes out of that uh, black black cloud uh, it's a cloud of trials and tribulation it was a cloud of difficulty it was a cloud of pessimism but at that point of time he didn't give up he kind of didn't allow all his fears to kind of dominate his senses and when he came out uh, he saw a runway and he was very happy he landed there and at that center the control center of that uh, uh, place the airport he asked for uh, the person who really helped him through that black aeroplane uh, but the, the attendant says there was nobody uh, when we checked our radar there was just one flight of yours due to the rough weather conditions all the flights were cancelled it was only your flight that was flying and i don't know which black aeroplane are you talking about so this part is actually a mystery was there a black aeroplane or uh, was uh, like uh, were they actually not able to spot that on the radar or he was just kind of imagining that and he trusted in his, his instincts and he was able to get out of it or you think there is actually a black aeroplane so this is your interpretation you can give your interpretations if you read the chapter carefully you'll be able to understand different nuances of it so this is a story in which there's a black aeroplane who kind of helped our central character to get our central character our pilot to get off from that stage of difficulty and we're done with both the parts i hope you understood for any queries you can comment you can like share subscribe also uh, you can connect with me on whatsapp to ask your doubts thank you students